Lockhart from the Oxygen Forensic Training Department and this video is talking about the social graph inside Oxygen Forensic Detective. So to fully understand the social graph and the things it can do for you, you kind of have to understand several other facets of your data and how that data is analyzed and categorized inside Detective. So first we have to kind of figure out how the accounts are coordinated for the user of a device and accounts not only accounts but the contacts because sometimes an account can be a contact and vice versa specifically will view the profile information for the given user of a device and it'll be really interesting when we look at a single device that may have 15 versions of the user that own the device I mean think about this for yourself a minute how many different ways do you communicate with people from your own device phone number text message Skype WhatsApp, Line, Email. I mean, if you really sit back and think about this, I can probably name 13 or 14 of myself right off the top of my head. So if we check the profile information inside Detective, we can get a really quick snapshot of accounts tied to the user or the owner of the phone. Then we're going to have to go look at some of the configuration options. A, because they're available now in Detective 12 and higher, and depending on how those configuration options are set, Detective will merge those accounts for that user, that, of that profile of the user of the device, as that extraction data is turned into case data for you to utilize. That's going to be really important to understand, because depending on how your configuration is set, is how you will see the aggregation of those contacts. Not only in the social graph, but everywhere there is the ability to filter on accounts. So this is going to become a critical piece of information, and hopefully education, as you begin and use OFD 12 going forward. The point will be to derive some function from chaos and I'll illustrate that by looking at a completely unmerged set of data in the social graph in particular because the first time you look at it you may just sit back in a chair and think what in the world am I doing? How am I going to tell what's what here? And our job will obviously be to help determine what's what there but we'll do it with effective merging recognizing the profiles of the target of the device. And not only one device, but we're going to delve into what happens when you put multiple devices in the graph. I mean, it's really cool when you can see that I'm talking to all these different people and we're talking back and forth and when and how we're talking. But it's even cooler when you can put three or four different devices in the graph. And while those three or four devices don't really talk to each other. They all happen to be talking to this one particular contact out here in the middle of nowhere. Who is that? Let's figure out how and why that person sitting there has a common contact amongst multiple devices or users or targets, call it what you will. So that's our goal in this as long as it takes video to figure out how the graph works and figure out what configurations inside Detective can get us our best bang for the buck when we're trying to figure out what's going on in the social graph. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so here's my detective. I'm just going to jump into my extraction list and get down to our old reliable human trafficking case and in this instance Allison Kelly's iPhone. Alright, so let me just start as we were talking about the bullets of things we needed to understand about the graph. Let me start here with Allison's owner information. So, you know, in this kind of overview section of data about the device and the extraction and the owner, I'm literally going to use the owner section. And while it might look like this to begin with, I'm going to have a look at her full profile. And just take a look here and start recognizing what's going on. Well, the full name is Allison Kelly. Here's another full name for something else, Allison. Here's an email address, AllisonKelly2015 at Gmail. There's a Facebook ID, the phone number of the phone. Twitter profile, a nickname, another nickname, an account name, an ID, an ID, an ID, an ID, and they just go on and on and could potentially all be represented in different areas of detective when you're doing your analysis. So A, great place to start to get a good snapshot of the owner information, but B, maybe a great place to help you confirm what you're seeing so you're not losing your mind trying to figure out what's going on. For instance, let's look here. I'll go to the call section for Allison. And when I get here, you know, I've got a column one, a column two, which is a big grid of data, and column three, our detail, our detail column. But if I come back here to column one where I want to filter things, 
I have accounts I can filter on. This is a phone number. There's an Allison. That's an Allison. There's an Allison. There's another Allison. And if you don't understand what's happening here, you literally sit back and think the tool's crazy. Or you're crazy. You don't know what's going on. Sure, I can dig down and look at the contacts that Allison's having discussions with from a call perspective because I'm in the call section right now. Or I can even look at the sources of those calls. And just as a side note, if you're a Detective 11 user and you remember the old calls section or the event log as being the place you located telephone calls, now the calls section aggregates all types of calls on the device. Whether they're phone calls, still the event log designation, or app specific types of calls, calls represents everything. So you also have the capability to filter on those sources where you didn't have that before all in an aggregated fashion. But our problem remains, we have a lot of Allisons. If I go back to the extraction information and let's say go check messages. Same thing, you know, I can look, filter by accounts, groups, contacts, and sources. Well, if I just expand contacts, that's great, there's a bunch of them. Um, groups, you know, maybe these are group text or group whatevers, who knows. Uh, but from an accounts perspective, now I've got Allison, Allison, Al Allison Kelly 2015, Allison Kelly New York. Uh, what's going on? Well, we can start making some determination that we have some different Allisons here because we are looking at the messages section right now and maybe these accounts are using messages. Okay, let's go back and just really uh, jump on the rabbit hole. Let me hit the social graph for Allison's phone. Now, based on what we were just talking about, here we go again. Oh my gosh, here's a phone number, there's a phone number, there's an Allison, 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 Allison Kelly, Allison Kelly 2015, Allison Kelly New York. So I've got an Allison, another Allison, and this Allison, and that one, and this one. And there's what looks like a center of a, a group maybe. Um, here's one of those phone numbers, here's an Allison, and there's... A... Okay, so for me, this is really dysfunctional. I'm not quite to the matrix mode where I can instantly discern that this is Allison talking to people one way, or another, or another, or another, or another, or several other ways in one big graph. I don't know if I'm good with this, and I especially don't know if I'm going to be able to explain this to someone else when it comes time. Um, you know, when I'm looking through the social graph and I'm seeing all these versions of Allison, and then I'm looking down and contacts for, for people or accounts or other things that supposedly Allison is talking to and I see Facebook and I see uh, Kakao Talk or I see Telegram. I mean these aren't Allison's friends. Why are those even in there? What's going on? I, what is this graph trying to tell me? Which is why we really have to get into some of what's an account? What's a contact? What's profile information? How are these things impacting the data we see? So to help better understand that, let me go out to the configuration options of Detective and have a look at a new specific section, if you haven't seen it, called Contacts, where I can start to understand or kind of get a look and feel on how Detective is determining what it's merging together as far as contacts or not. So there are merge rules, a phone number or account or email address are the things, the criteria that Detective would be using to merge together different players maybe right now, maybe different Allisons so to speak. And within a device, at a device level, am I doing contacts that are in the same section or different sections or both or neither? And this one's neither for merging contacts and accounts from the same section or difference. Or merge accounts that are in the same section. Or look, overall in the entire case, if I have 10 or 15 devices, am I going to merge with different criteria, yes or no? Within those criteria, don't worry about sell, home, or work, the labels, whatever's in those fields, don't use those as part of your merge. Don't use the phone number that starts with 112, or in different parts of the world, 911, or things that are really not going to be independently unique for a user you're trying to merge together. And no reply at gmail.com is a great email to just disregard because it's probably not having to do with anybody but maybe a bot mailing something or who knows what. But that's not going to be uniquely identifying anybody that we're after. So these settings are default. 
let's go see what happens as a result of these settings. And we kind of had a look already at the result of those settings, but we're going to check a different section this time. So I'll go back to Allison's phone, and let's look at contacts. So now I'm looking at the accounts that make up the contacts, contacts that make up the contacts, groups that make up contact information, and all the sources that these contacts are communicating with each other. So if I look from an account perspective, let me turn off contacts and groups, and I have accounts 15. All right, if I look down at the bottom, I've got 15 filtered things out of the total number of 293. But if I look in here, there's an Allison, there's an Allison, there's an Allison, there's an Allison, there's an Allison. There's an Allison. Allison, 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 Allison. Now look, these are not merged together right now. As part of this video, I have unmerged all of these Allisons to make a point. However, if I come up to this Merge Contacts and automatically merge contacts, watch what happens. Detective takes off, does a little work, does work based on, by the way, does work based on these configuration options, and look what happens to our contacts. Okay, now I've got an Allison. There's an Allison. There's an Allison. That looks like it's probably an Allison. There's an Allison, Allison, Allison. Not sure about this one, but look at the difference here. Look how many different versions of Allison have been turned into one Allison. That's merging. If I expand just to show, I've got Viber, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Safari, uh, text messaging, or WhatsApp, I'm sorry, whatever accounts, phones, all these versions of Allison are now this one Allison. So let's go have a look at the social graph. It looks a little different, a little more refined, because we've got a few less Allisons to deal with, but I'm not happy. So I'm going to go back to contacts, and I'm going to start doing things like this. I'll select this Allison, and I'm going to use the control key and select this one. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be an Allison Kelly as well. That Allison, and heck, on the picture alone, I'll do this one, and this one, and, you know, the main one. And now that I have them all selected, I'm going to go to Merge Contacts, and Merge Selected Contacts. Now look. Now I've got one Allison, and all of these different representations of Allison and the clients, tools, or applications she's using to get things done. Let's go back and check the social graph. Wow, big difference. Okay, so I've got this pixie lot who seems to be the center of some communication universe, and then I've got an Allison down here that happens to be the same common Allison that's talking to all these different people. Wow, is that a lot easier to deal Well, okay, let's be clear. For me, that's a lot easier to deal with. I'm not trying to figure out which Allison is which anymore, because if you look under my accounts, I've got all the Allisons together as one Allison. Look, I'm concerned with the fact that Allison is talking to Stephen Bremer. I don't care what particular client they were using at this point. I can go figure that out if I need to. But I'm just, I just need to know those two talked about killing me or whatever my particular target of investigation is of that particular day. But now I'm only dealing with one Allison. Much more effective use of the social graph. Now, how do I see those communications? Let's pretend I was after, oh, this Stephen Bremer. Well, there's 84 communications between Stephen, that Stephen Bremer, I think there might be a couple of them, and that Allison. Well, let's make sure we utilize the best view. So if I turn on the communication view, ah, now I can click on those 84 messages and see them in the communication view. Or maybe it was... Um, Wonder Girls. There's one co one communication between Wonder Girls and Allison, or John Anders. There's one there, or Get Taxi. There's two there, and you can see down below as we click on individual users, their messages will populate in the message pane or the communication pane down below. Now, a couple things going on here. Let's do some good practice. I've got a Stephen Bremer. Looks like I've got another Stephen Bremer, and I thought I saw. 
Well, you know what? Let's just filter up here. Brimmer. Steven, Steven, oh, that looks like it. Oh, okay, what is this? The answer being, it's a group. There's a phone number and a Steven Bremer together. Fair enough. And here's a Bremer Steven. Let's employ what we just learned. I'm going to go back to contacts. And Allison, that's great. Let me put everybody back together. And I'm just going to filter inside contacts here with Bremer. Aha. So I've got this Steven Bremer, who looks to be already merged to an extent by the tool based on those configuration settings when you imported this data. But we've got some other ones. That looks like him. That looks like him. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's him. And this looks like him. Okay, here we go. I'll hold the control key. And I'll select this one, this one, that one, and oh, let me stop there. So, I'm stopping here. Why? Okay, here's the thing. I know these, well, I'm surmising these are individual Stevens. This Steven, I'm pretty sure, is part of a group. We'll narrow that down in a minute. And while I'd like to say Steven is guilty about everything, if this is the group about killing everybody on the planet, it probably isn't fair for me to just associate this group with individual Steven. You know, group's a group. Individuals are individuals from a merging perspective. And speaking of merging, look at that little, uh, the chain link here that indicates merging, right? It's the same merge contacts icon we have there. And you can see that merging's already been done. Okay, I've got these four. Let's do it. Merge, selected contacts. Ah, uh, look, now look at my Steven. And now let's go back to the social graph. Okay, so I've still got my pixie lot, which I'm pretty sure, let's just check. Pixie lot is a group indeed, and there it is. And then, oh, look at this, if I give myself a little real estate, there's the Steven and the other phone number group we saw earlier, which we didn't merge into Steven, and that's okay. So now I've got Allison talking to a Steven Bremer, and I think I've got all the other Steven Bremers put it together. So now there are 94 lines of communication between these two. And I could come down here and sort between Viber and WhatsApp again. I'm just worried the fact that one of them said, we'll write you a bit later to the other one. That's the smoking gun. It's a WhatsApp message if I really need to figure that out. Matter of fact, I could select that message and, oh my gosh, there it is. It's the one between Steven and Allison. It's my smoking gun. Do what you need to do with it at that point. You're using the social graph to filter your way down to communication between people. Now, let's go back and do something else. Now that we've we've kind of narrowed down our contact and our account problem to where I've got one Allison, I understand the groups that are involved, my display is that much cleaner. Now let's go down to the contacts themselves and, okay, Danielle Rizzo, you know, I could check that out. There's one message, you know, hey, let's switch to Telegram. Okay, maybe that's super important or not. Uh, this one has one message. It is a uh, voice message, I think. That's great. But, you know, get taxi having two messages to me. Mm, those are get taxi messages. Uh, Facebook is a contact of mine. We talk a lot. No, not really. That's a confirm. Oh, a confirmation code. Okay. Think about all the multi factor authentications you go through. Telegram. There's a telegram code. Uh, WhatsApp there's a WhatsApp code. I mean, there are a billion of these things on your phone if you've used it for any length of time. But guess what? They're all communicating. They just don't happen to be communications we're interested in. So let's do this. Let me come up here to this filter where I can slide the number of communications I want to see or not. For instance, let me just bump it up. Show me only things that are greater than one. And look at what happens to all that noise. Now, some of it might not be noise. I might want to go look at Danielle's, or this one, or this one. But the majority of those single messages that could be confirmation codes or two-factor authentication are now out of our view. Because I'm not, I mean, that's noise. I don't, even, I don't have time to go through half of this anyway. Let's narrow the focus the best I can. You know what? Maybe I don't want to include Viber. Maybe I don't want to include Skype. Now I can start filtering backward and filtering things out of the conversation I'm not interested in. So I've got, oh, Barbara, Steven, the Weekend Plans group, um, the Get Taxi stuff, Team Snapchat, and Angela. 
this is where the filtering capability of the social graph goes crazy. The tool in general goes crazy because we're a database. We can filter this to that to this to that any way we want. And let's see, mm, you have nice plans. Okay, well, that is the smoking gun. Let me go ahead and just mark that as key evidence while I'm here and go crazy on it. Like before, look, maybe Steven's my guy. Let me just show Steven's contact card so I can still go determine things like information about Steven, what kind of communications Steven has had in general, any statistics about Steven that I would be interested in, inbound, outbound, or messages. And, you know, if Steven's a part of a group, hmm, that group and the weekend plans group. Aha. Okay, let's just do one more thing before we go. So, pretending we enacted all the things we've learned, I have Allison Kelly's data in the social graph, and Lars Johnson. Lars is actually a conglomerate of several personalities and people, but the point I have right now is I've got multiple extractions in the graph for comparison. So now I have the ability to filter on each one. Turn off Allison, turn off Patrick, which is also Lars and a few other names, turn them back on, turn them back on. What I'm not doing right now is showing any type of contact and because I have multiple extractions now I can look at things like uniqueness between Allison's world in the bubble or Patrick or Lars whoever want to call him's world in the bubble and that's cool because they all have good one-to-one -one relationships but based on the data in the graph my super interest is going to be this the commonality between the two and now we can see, once we jump outside Allison's bubble and Lars's bubble, we've got in common two different people, Homero and Angela. I don't know what they're doing, but those happen to be, I don't know, <laughs> drug dealers, uh, bank robber accomplices, friends, who knows what they are, but they are two people that happen to be in common between these two targets. And if you just saw, I left clicked and highlighted those two people together, so then I could see all their conversation in the pane down below. That is massive power from an analytic standpoint. Okay, thanks for watching. I appreciate you spending time with the video, learning a little bit more about the social graph, and I hope to see you in class soon. Take care.